Hey guys, welcome to my channel Tech Travel. If you haven't watched my earlier video on AWS Basics, I would suggest you watch that video and come over to watch this video. Today, I'm going to discuss about the VPC overview. VPC is a virtual space where you can launch your resources. You can perform your network segmentation and manage network traffic. You can launch VPC in an AWS region. AWS region is a geographical area where you can launch your VPC. You can create your VPC in any AWS region. An AWS region can have one or more availability zones. Availability zones are nothing but a data center with higher availability. When you create a VPC, by default, it creates a router which is used to talk to all the resources within the VPC. And any type of internet traffic, you can use Internet Gateway to control that. Every router has a route table that is used to configure routes for the traffic. As you see, in this route table, the internet traffic represented by 0.0.0.0 passes through the internet gateway, whereas the BBC subnet 10.10.0.0 passes through the local router. Hence, this makes possible for all the resources within the BPC to talk to each other. Each BPC can further be subdivided into public subnet and private subnet. Remember that subnet are created within the availability zones. You create your resources in the public and private subnet as per your need. Ideally, you would want your internet facing traffic in the public subnet, whereas the backend resources like database in the private subnet. As discussed earlier, public subnet resources can talk to the internet through internet gateway. But what if private subnet resources wants to talk to the internet for useful tasks like patching? You can create a NAT gateway or NAT instance in the public subnet and allow your instances in the private subnet to talk to the internet. But remember, as I said earlier, route table must be updated to reflect the change. Furthermore, you can use an elastic load balancer to balance the traffic coming into your public subnet resources. This is applicable when you have, let's say, a web server serving the web traffic. Now let's take the scenario. You have more than one VPC. What if you want your VPC resources to talk to each other? As you see, both VPC have different subnet and each resources within each subnet will have their own private IP. AWS provides a service called VPC pairing. With VPC pairing, you can enable resources within each VPC talk to each other with their private subnet. What if you have more than two VPC? You can establish as many one-to-one -one VPC pairing as you want. But remember, VPC is non-transitive. By that, I mean, if VPC A is connected to VPC B and VPC B is connected to VPC C, it does not mean VPC A can talk to VPC C. You need to establish its own one-to-one -one VPC pairing between A and C to allow the resources from VPC A to talk to VPC C. So VPC pairing is okay if you have a small amount of VPC. But if you have hundreds and thousands of VPC, it's not feasible to establish a one-to-one -one relationship. So the VPC keeps growing, the VPC peering mesh keeps growing. It's not feasible, right? Don't worry, AWS provides a solution for this. You can use a service called Transit Gateway. With Transit Gateway, you can connect all your VPC to the Transit Gateway 
and allow them to talk to each other. In this picture, all five VPC are connected to the transit gateway. Hence, resources from each of the VPC can talk to each other through transit gateway. With transit gateway, you can connect your corporate data center or head office using the SSL VPN, which we'll discuss in next slide. Let's say you have your AWS component in VPC with your resources configured, and you have your data center or a head office with some servers and storage. What if you want a secure communication from your corporate data center to the VPC through the internet? You can establish a site-to-site -site VPN to achieve that. Each VPC has a virtual gateway, which is denoted by VGW. And each corporate data center or your client locations have a router, which is denoted by CGW. Client router or corporate data center router is known as customer gateway. You can establish a site-to-site -site SSL VPN between customer gateway in your corporate data center and Amazon VPC. What if you have more than one VPC? You connect all the VPC to a transit gateway and establish VPN connectivity between customer gateway and transit gateway. But remember, as I always say, you have to have a route table updated to reflect the change. As you see, 10.1.0.0 that points to VPCA has transit gateway attachment 1, which reflects in the route table. Now let's talk about another service called Direct Connect. In the previous example, we saw you connected your corporate data center to the AWS VPC using encrypted SSL VPN. But remember that VPN traffic passes through the internet as well. What if you don't want your traffic to pass out through the internet? Direct Connect is a solution for that. It's a network service and it's an alternative to using internet to utilize the AWS cloud services. It enables low latency, secure and private connections to the AWS. It does not involve internet, but instead it uses a dedicated private network connections between your intranet and AWS Amazon VPC. There are multiple direct connect locations in many cities in the world. Those are mostly handled by the third party provider. So let's take this scenario. You have your VPC with a virtual gateway. You have your corporate offices, head office and branch office at two different locations. You can establish a direct connect connectivity from your VPC to the direct connect location and then to your head office. Now let's take this example where you have three VPC with three different subnets and you have corporate data center and corporate branch office. Now let's utilize all the important network services that we learned earlier to connect and establish a network connectivity between this data center and the VPC. First, since we have more than one VPC, we use a transit gateway to connect each VPC among each other. And that change is reflected in the transit gateway route table. Furthermore, we can establish a direct connect connectivity from your corporate data center to the transit gateway. Since branch office might not need a con direct connect, you can establish a SSL connectivity from your branch office to the transit gateway. Hence, you can utilize the AWS networking services to achieve a secure connectivity from your data center. It can be your data center or your client's data center to the Amazon PPC. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, share and subscribe if you really like my video. 
I'll be posting further more videos on Amazon and containers.